Good evening, everyone. My name is Victor, and welcome to Should Suns Rise, a Once More Into the Void campaign. Uh, this game by Red and Daddy. Um, and it's a wonderful game. I'm very excited to have you guys here tonight. Um, I am playing Anarch, your captain and resident fuck up. <laughs> He's trying. He's trying so hard, loves. Um, and let's go ahead and introduce the rest of our cast tonight. Hama. Uh, I wasn't ready to go first. Ah, uh, hello, everybody. I went first. Well, okay. Yes, that's fair. Um, <laughs> anyway, hello, everybody. My name is Hamna. I use any and all pronouns, and I am a TTRPG performer. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at hshahid underscore, where I talk about all of the different projects I'm a part of. And today, I will be playing Liana, who uses they, he pronouns, who is our bound. Okay, I will throw it Sorry. over to you. No, it's all good. I thought you were going to do it. It's all good. I'm passing it over to Jay. <laughs> Every Hi, time. Guys. I'm Jay Justice. I'm a cosplayer, a performer, an editor, consultant, game dev. I do all the things all over the internet. Uh, I'm playing Melita Nuru, who is the steadfast, tries real hard <laughs> to be there for everyone on the team. And uh, she would agree that the team fuck up title is a co- owned title like it is shared <laughs> we work together and earned that ourselves thank you <laughs> and uh, next up is katrina well hi there i'm katrina i'm playing uh leo the robot who is beginning to explore their feelings after realizing that oh good they have feelings oh god they have feelings um, and I, uh, I use, uh, she, her, they, them pronouns and Leo uses they and them pronouns. I'm sorry. I keep laughing every time with like the little bit of silence in between each intro. <laughs> As we're just trying to figure out who's going to speak next. Well, it's like we've been doing this for three it's weeks. you next. It is me. Never forget. Uh, it's hello, everybody. I'm Cleric. I use he, they pronouns. You can find me everywhere on their cleric underscore 34. I'm playing the broken Lopez. Just sad, 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 sad. You know, just what is it who Lopez is as just a person, as a being. Uh, but as uh, Victor says, I am also the resident red card puller. Have you considered just being different? <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks for your friends who rolled dice for having me. <laughs> I am going to make a super cut of every single time you've done that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. Um, before we get into games, uh, we have an announcement. Um, so we have uh, made a new little um, command that I did wrong. I still did, did I, wait. There I it is. I did that one, there, there we go. There it is. <laughs> um, that has the Pally link uh, for tipping us if you guys are enjoying this performance and if you guys can spare the dollar, um, please tip our cast. We are doing this amazing work for you guys. And I, I'm really proud of everyone already on cast. And I'm sure, you know, show your appreciation. And if you want a reward to go with that appreciation, you can, of course, get a little bit more info. You can pay $5 and reveal a card either in the enemy deck or in one of our hands. Um, or you could pay $15 to make our lives harder or easier in which you can add a card either to someone's hand or add a card to the enemy deck. <laughs> you want us to just like fail when the final mission comes I mean, or you want us to just work super hard i mean i'm all about it pay pay me for my silence is what i'm saying and um, <laughs> so y'all know i did put on the overlay how many black cards and how many red cards in play so if you want the enemy to win you have to put more red cards in that deck and if you want to give our players a better chance you want more black cards in that deck so now there's a visual representation for y'all <laughs> once we have more black than red cards oh my god we are winning uh <laughs> possibly i mean last game we all pulled uh 
we all pulled black cards at the very end of the last game. If you got, if you guys recall, uh, um, poetic except cinema. for you. Did I? I thought that's I how we her. got the reveal. That's how oh, we got yeah. the reveal of uh, of Anarch coming back. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I forgot we left off with that. Yeah, Sephiroth. I mean, Anarch. True Anarch. <laughs> <You're> Anarch. Anarch. <laughs> Uh, but let's get into games, folks. Uh, up first for choosing a game is going to be our resident cleric, Lopez. Um. <laughs> uh, yeah, should I do a brief summary of like what, what happened a little bit last session, like to ease in? Oh, yes. All right. So we had just been like shot down by this evil bridal party that was chasing us that no idea why they were chasing us. I've done nothing wrong in my day in my life. Uh, but as we were kind of in this, uh, we got shot down. We ended up landing in Anarch's hometown, which there was a statue of two Anarchs, which was weird. Uh, but then we found out two very interesting things. One is our Anarch is not Anarch, but actually Alan, uh, Anarch's twin brother, which is fucking wild, which is a big reveal for everyone emotionally. Uh, but then uh, Maletta and Lopez ended up discovering that there is a... Uh, enemy was it radar enemy like transceiver communicator. communicator that was underneath the town and so we really haven't gotten an answer about what that is but as we were kind of just dealing with all the emotions of like what was going on of being like alan anarch alark uh somebody ended up attacking the middle of town which was this hood, hooded trident figure. We've been hunting us for a little bit, but then it's finally hood kind of comes off. We see the other face and it's actually the real Anarch. So that's kind of where we left off last session with the real Anarch hunting us down uh, with a whole bunch of like a legion of like the enemy, uh, which is fun. So convenient with- to leave out that Lopez was gay, but you know, that's, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Extremely clear. I mean, yeah, Lopez and, you know, they had a like, very gay moment, you know, that's whatever. <laughs> Crazy. Everyone is gay until proven otherwise. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> I, was, I was about to chime in and say that. Actually, like, Hamna, it was implied, and it's kind of weird that you made me have to say it overtly. Wow. Not what I would do, but. Homophobic. <laughs> personally, if somebody came at me like that, I would stand for it, which I didn't. So now we're going into the game. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I appreciate you. Uh, yeah, so the game I picked to start us off is just like old times. So it's a mini game for me and another crew member where we're pinned down fighting against an enemy. And so we kind of, as we're getting pinned down by this enemy, we kind of reminisce about what's like the past and what's happened in the past and how it, it kind of reflects what's currently going on. So uh, to paint a scene for everybody, paint a scene for the cast and for you watching uh, is I imagine we had just gotten this reveal. Anarch is now the hood is falling down. I think everyone is just like jaws wide looking at Alan or our Anarch and then looking over there. And then I imagine like a whole legion of like Leo's kind of drop down and start firing into the town. And so everyone kind of ducks undercover, kind of like all like fired, like uh, Lopez starts firing back at them. Like we're all just firing. Everyone's getting undercover. And I like to imagine that uh, like, like we start yelling like, hey, we have to get back to the ship. And that's kind of just where this scene kind of starts out with, Mm -hmm. I think, Lopez and Anarch on one side and the rest of the crew on like another cover being like, I think Lopez looked being like, we'll cover you. Get back to the ship. And it's just like firing on like uh, this whole legion of enemies. Mm-hmm. How, how does that sound? I love that. I'd like to add that I think right at the beginning of this fight um, in this unassuming house, uh, when Anarch and Lopez decide to take like a forward position, mm-hmm. like Anarch smashes through the walls of one of this of this house, and just <laughs> there's like a little armory there. What? With- why, why do you have that in your walls? Did you think I, if anyone discovered that this is where I'm from, did you not think that I would not protect my, my, my home? 
Yeah, but that doesn't seem like insulated. Like that doesn't seem like good insulation for walls to have. You know, like it's just a, like it must get be really cold. You know, I'm I'm sorry. I'm focused on weird details. I'm focused on weird details. <laughs> You're gonna drag the insulation at <laughs> a time like that. Mark is like grabbing a whole ass rifle. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I don't know. I just there's a lot going on. There's a lot of shock happening. I mean, there's yeah, you're over yeah. there and also over here. Your real mm-hmm. names. I'm having. There's a lot. I to held process. my brother as he died. I am also very upset. Yes. <laughs> what then how then how is your brother over there now i don't know and i i literally if i stop to think about it i think we'll both die so like don't encourage me to think about it okay so think about the insulation why like think, think about that think about those things Can we just think like about about, surviving? i don't know it's just like blaster <laughs> fire is all happening <laughs> <laughs> um is this why we need to impress each other so badly because we can't speak without the toxic masculinity is just really seeping through your pores both of i you. mean do, do you want to talk do you want to have an emotional talk right now what we're like what we're getting blasted at i don't think we really I was literally saying no i was literally saying we should not do that you know what maybe we should and just start firing through <laughs> um <laughs> yeah, that's why dance. Anarch wants to impress Lopez so badly because he just wants this. He wants some semblance of like positive interaction during a crisis where they're not gonna die. <laughs> okay, so what? I don't even. <laughs> my, uh, so I guess the first player, uh, the two crew members, describe the change about them since they last saw each other during the battle. Anyone may ask details about the location, relationships, or circumstances. The other player conducts the flow of the mini game. Take turns leading the crew members in their battle against the enemy. On your turn, choose one. I guess I don't know who goes first in this one. Um, you uh, so I. It looks like I choose the first challenge or vulnerability. Gotcha. Which one do I go for? Um. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> Um, the enemy, I, I want to choose the vulnerability. The Go enemy has us surrounded and things look bad. Mm-hmm. Um, so I push myself to distract them, hoping that it will give you the opportunity you need. Okay. Uh, Mer, we're going to draw a card outside of an ending. All right. So I need to know. you just need to know the color, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Should we, should we set up something before we pull just to see <laughs> Well, I'm about, I already have it in my hand. So the card I drew was black. And whose hand is it going into? Anarchs. Anarch. Okay, so I feel like what happens mm-hmm. is um, Anarch is sort of watching as like his brother come back from the dead is sort of like pushing forward. I feel like we aren't the only ones trying to fight these guys. But it's civilians trying to protect their homes. Yeah. And Anarch is like sort of getting more frustrated and is like, and glances over at Lopez and is like, all right, you've always been better at this shit than me. So I'm going to distract him. And then you take the best shot you can take. How? how? Um, well, there's like 80 of them out there. And what, what are you going to do? Um, I have an idea. I mean, if that's really my brother, this will work. And if it doesn't, well, I'll be, I'll feel better. And then Anarch like pops up Mm -hmm. and he's just like, um, wow, you aged really badly, old man. And I, I like to imagine this moment. It's like one of those things where everything goes quiet. Everyone has stopped. And you just see Lopez just like kneeling next to you. Just like, what the fuck? And it's just like everyone is just staring at you in this just awkward, just quiet moment. Just like, yeah, who knew you'd be the ugly twin when we grew up? I think Lopez looks to see if it's working, and it kind of, and I guess, is is it working? I think, I think, um, like again, like the 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 fire the the fire has silence, and Lopez just hears like, like almost a very familiar whir of like a battle suit just sort of droop, 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 coming closer, but no extra fire. <laughs> and Anarch is like, Anarch's like, like making like a trigger motion, like at like 
like below his waist, like hiding it, like towards Lopez. Like, and I think yeah. Lopez. Just, what? What? You think you're so? You you always thought you were so great, but then I took my shot and I took your place. Oh, not throwing away my shot! Boom! <laughs> and then <laughs> it's um, uh, and then goes and like blasts them right in the chest as soon as they like. I like to imagine they walk point blank to your brother, and it's like I think to imagine there was like a hint of like clarity, like. Like and then they so sort Helen and then this uh, Lopez pops up, boom, blank shot and like sends a shot of them goes flying into another home. Yeah, that is. Um, Anarch doesn't look that great after that, but it's just like, all right, all right, all right, run, let's go, let's run. Okay, Bix like grabs you and just like starts booking it, uh, and it's kind of just like, everyone better be by the ship when when we're done here. Uh, <laughs> and that is uh, your turn to choose a challenge or vulnerability. Mm-hmm. I think I'll choose. I'll choose a challenge. Uh, I want to execute a complicated move that served us well in the past, but it's been a long time since so we pulled this off. I think as uh, we're running, uh, I think as we're running, Lopez like looks at Anarch and is just like, "Okay, uh, you remember you remember the, uh, the 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 worm maneuver that we did?" Yes. Yeah. Yep. So yep. we, I, 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 you. Go high, I go low, and then we go straight through and we do a zigzag kind of worm motion in it. You remember? Yeah, yeah. And then if things go bad, it cuts you out of the worm. Yeah, yeah. Then you gun me out of the worm. Yes, we'll do it. Yeah. Yes, yes. So okay. that's the perfect. Gotcha. That's what we got. So uh you so on, on three, on like what it's one, two, three, go. Not one, two, three, it's one, two, three, go. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Yeah, maybe. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So let's try it. One, two, three, and uh, Mary, can you pull a card for us? I pulled red. I will. <laughs> Friends Who Roll Dice is a channel that is a collaborative effort from a bunch of. Woof. <laughs> 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 uh, okay, so with the red card, uh, we're hopelessly out of sync and end up in a bad position. This, file, this card goes. So I guess I was like, oh, uh, we, I imagine that as soon as we jump out, uh, I try to j- go high and you try to go low and somehow we like collide into each other. Mm. And then like, we're I, just, it was just in a pile. I think, I think just cause Anarch heard go high and I was, and Anarch's head was like, I usually go low, but I guess since Lopez is like heavy, like heavier now, it's best to go low. And then you went high out of like mm. memory. Out of like muscle then, memory. <laughs> it's like, I, I said, go high. I said, but I was going high. And Anarch is like, we don't have time to go over how wrong that was. <laughs> um, and then I think we're surrounded again. I, we, I guess we are. <laughs> oh. um, and Anarch is like, Anarch just pulls like a holdout pistol out of his boot. <laughs> and he's just trying to like. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I think. Uh as we collide each other and like all the enemy comes to us, I think uh, Lopez grabs us and uh, grabs and like dives into another house. And it's just like, okay, that didn't go to plan. Uh, you like, I, I said, I was going to go high. I said, like, I, I, you, you, you always go low. You, you always go yeah. low. You know this. No. Yeah. I'm sorry. I listen. Okay. We can't, um, we can't like, all right, we need to make it out of here. And then I think while he's like trying to like deal with that, I think just someone just sort of like crashes through the wall. And I'd like to introduce another vulnerability. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think this voice that is like almost completely mechanized and just, and um, just says, who knew my older brother would abandon our home? Listen, stay here and we'll let the rest of your rats go. If you leave, well, I don't care about blowing this place up. And, uh, My twin is making an offer they know I can't refuse. I have pulled black. Um. (laughs) 
So fun, uh, fun about that. Um, yeah, I think uh, the way that Anarch runs this is um, he grabs, if this is okay, he grabs Lopez's like um, arm mm. and looks like he's about to say, um, like run away or go on without me and instead is just like shoot him fucking shoot him what 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 shoot okay, him. Over here boom just <laughs> shoots just like pulls and just again just like sends him right into the chest like like into another wall it's like I, is, yeah yeah and i'm like i'd like to see you try everyone will literally just move you would know this. And then Anarch like gets his ass up. He's like, let's go. I got okay, grabs you and starts running again. It's like I do as one idiot. I like it's just like cursing you out in like every known language, like Spanish, English, and all of it. It's just like like what that's your brother? I I, I can't like what, I, I, do you not have a plan? You expected me to have a plan if my dead brother was a cyborg and showed up. I don't. I don't know. You always have a plan. You always have a backup or a backup of a backup or like it's like I think well, my plan was if he ever came back to steal his life back, I was gonna give it to him. But that's not. No, I don't want to die. That's I, a stupid I, plan. So I don't have a plan. It right is. Now. It, I, 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 don't go to, I'm not Sun Tzu. <laughs> All right, who? <laughs> just... <laughs> and Eric's like, you, now who didn't study in the military? I, you know, I don't like to read. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and our gum. I think they're. I think they're just rushing along. <laughs> Um, like, like the the sh- the ship is starting to be in sight. I feel. Yeah, I guess like it's like okay. I think uh, Melita and all of them are coming down for like you're gonna beam us up. Okay, should we get to a roof? I mean, yeah. I I mean, can you jump that high? We can always. They're, they're stairs. They're literal stairs. Sorry, yeah, I forgot about the accessibility in this town. It's one of my prides um, that I help. You know what? Let's go. I don't. I, don't, I really don't need a history lesson right now. <laughs> <laughs> I think just run up the stairs. Uh, mm-hmm. I do. We do. Do you want to do one more challenge and see? It's uh, yeah. Let's the do game. it. Uh, I want to show off and prove I've outgrown you. And it's easy for the enemy to take advantage of my pride. Uh, I like to imagine, like, I guess what happens is. Uh, takes like it's just like all right go up i'll cover you like i can climb like i can climb up these stairs easy like three jumps three jumps and i'll be up okay yeah no worries and it's like blasting back and like the enemy just like don't worry i I got this 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 and then tries to jump and what's the card mayor black let's go oh my god Huh. Yeah, it's whatever. So, um, <laughs> uh, I give them the real show and then some, and I keep this card in my hand. Beautiful. Okay. So I find, okay. So that card comes to me and then I imagine it does the jump and like does three like shots and just like takes out like three of the enemies. And like, as you're climbing the stairs, you like finally get up there, like, uh, Lopez like supercharges their suit and boom, like lands right next to you. And it's just like, does the landing. And as, as you get up there, kind of looks at you, it's like, yes, I fucking did it. I fucking did it. Yes. Yeah, Anarch is, Anarch is running over, grabbing Lopez by the arm. He's like, "You fucking did it, buddy! I fucking did it! I did it!" Yeah. And um, and then, and then like grabs you. He's like, "We did it!" <laughs> and Anarch lets out like a loud whoop, and I think that's when the ship broken and limping still grabs us and we try to run. Mm-hmm. I imagine it's one of those scenes where like. Like what I'm picturing in my mind is like they're at the end of the building and we're running, and then a whole bunch of enemies are right behind us, like shooting, and then like your brother is also up there about to like throw the trident, and like as we're running, I think Lopez looks at Anarch 
and like Anna looks at like Lopez and it goes like there's this like flash there's like I think they're both smiling and there's like a flashback like you know how sometimes like they superimpose like a flashback scene yeah. on like a current scene I like to imagine it's a previous one where Lopez is like not in the suit uh running right next to uh, like a younger anarch and like there's a different enemy like firing back at them but they're both like running just like smiling like on a previous mission like they've done this before and they're both just like super giddy while just running like Mm -hmm. hey it's the two of us but like we just like we're getting chased by anybody this is like the funnest like it's been in a while yeah and like harkens back to both of them i love that yeah and then as they get to the end jump and like dive right into the uh uh it's like the hangar as mm-hmm. like we're about to take off like back into space all right mm. so honestly i think out of the pair of us lopez probably has impressed a little bit more than anarch during this game so that means that you get to choose the ending okay i i think we win but just barely because like well, we got away, right? So I don't, it's yeah. either we, so. I like the, the first gets, one or the third one, really. Yeah. I like to, I like to think we win, but just barely because we've left. We managed to escape. They didn't get us, but mm-hmm. you've lost like your hometown. And I think that's what like is lost and like irrevocably lost. It's oh, like, yeah. like you can no longer go back there. Yeah. I think there's a stinger. I think it's. They are in the they are in the the hold of the ship with like the, sh- the the ship door closing and they you know there's that giddiness of like we got mm-hmm. away and then Anarch looks out at the closing hold and sees his hometown destroyed mm-hmm. and I think he sort of like he his hands drop away from Lopez and he crawls towards the the bay door as it's closing. And when it closes, he just sort of like slumps against it. And I think Lopez like stand like is like still in that giddiness, but then also sees that is like <sighs> and slowly like very awkwardly walks up to you and like slumps down next to you. Doesn't touch you, but like slumps down next to you. And kind of is just very silent for a couple of seconds, and it's kind of just like ah. Anarch. We'll, we'll get it back. Yeah. The, they were after us, I'm sure. I'm sure everyone else will be okay, right? And I think his face is like, please lie to me. Please fucking lie to me. And I think, again, Lopez is signed for a quick second and then is like, if that's the town that raise this great anarch, then I think they'll be just fine. Um, I think he looks at Lopez and it's, um, when he first picked up Lopez, he went in all smirk and smarm Mm -hmm. and everything. And during the dinner that they just had right before this incident, like anarch really let that mask slip. And there is, it's, it's hollow and tired and exhausted, but there's a real smile for a moment. And it's just like, yeah. you're right. And then he just sort of like covers his face and it just, I think he just stays there for a moment. Like he needs that. Just like, tap tap on the back just yeah yeah let it out good good game <laughs> you like your cards <laughs> oh my yeah. god maybe All right, uh cleric first cleric we have i'm sorry red I had a brief moment of hope. I had a brief <laughs> moment of hope. And then, hope you know. Hope is dangerous. You know that, Clarence. Hope is dangerous. You know what else is dangerous? The amount of games that Friends Who Roll Dice have available for our audience to watch. Uh, it's... 
I'm not even plugging my own. Mer, just anymore. play cleric to um to create commercials for the channel. You know, honestly, I will, you were talking it. about that super cut. I'll make it. I, I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> this is very funny to me. I'll make it. Please, do we, up, so, please. So, okay, so we see how the enemy's gotten stronger for this one. Um, I think they have the town. I think it's, I think that's the best one is they have the town and they have like, you know what? I think they captured your mom. I think your brother like walked up and captured your mom. Mm, I love that. I'm going to O-card that. I'm gonna let oh okay oh yeah oh no no oh no no i oh 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 I'm okay good. i okay. love that oh, okay. okay i'm just gonna make sure that everyone else is cool with it yeah <laughs> yes all right and yeah you're muted love if you had something to say and vic i also pulled red for you oh oh so tasty to come yeah. out of a game with two uh with two enemies go stronger i think in this case um it also says how they become more terrifying um, so along with capturing um, their mother, I think uh, they go through um, like this other anarch uh, goes through the goes through the house and finds the records of the letters um, that uh, anarch gave the anarch left behind. Um, but digs a little deeper and finds more, um, more logs that Anarch had left behind, like captain's logs from their first time fighting the enemy. Um, so old bases, old contacts, people who had helped us before, they now have records all of it i would like to ask a question yeah how much information did you put about the rest of the crew in those logs um probably a lot of personal stuff uh, but uh, not a lot of like physical capabilities but probably like a lot a lot how much does it know stuff? about the rest of us like just just a silly goofy question you know personally <laughs> speaking how much you know, you know, I'd like to ask the crew that like if we were on like a mission where we all constantly thought we were like gonna die or lose, um, how much would you share with the people around you? I feel oh wait here, hold on. I feel like Leo, uh the the first time around, Leo really like opened up and like was super vulnerable and that like that hit really hard when, you know, everything went wrong. And that's why Leo is like resorting back to being very robotic. Um, so I think Leo would have sh- like willingly, if the captain asked them for information, Leo would have shared it because Leo was dedicated to this crew. They I think definitely there's a lot of personal it. information in those notes, in those old captain logs. I- I think for Lopez, like, they shared a lot with Liana, but also I think shared with Anarch because they thought like, oh, you know, we're trench, like we're in the trenches together. Of course, I'm going to share with you like my deep darks or like, hey, I think I'm starting to have feelings for this person, like things like that. Like, (laughs) oh my God. So yeah, I feel like they just, the thing is like, it's a lot. It's like years of us working together and they might have like Leo's, but I think it's written. I think like it's like scanned um, written things. I feel like Maletta would have yelled at Anarch for not like locking it in an actual computer and writing it down on paper. But I feel like even though like this is a lot of information that has fallen into their hands, this cache is not so easily scanned. So it's not super terrible yet. I think you're overestimating how easy it is for programs to read handwriting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have been told that my I'll handwriting is very bad at being scanned. Okay, um, okay. Let's let's hope. I don't know. Let's hope. I have think about how pattern recognition shit. works for software. If a, if a computer has been able to look at handwriting from 8 billion people, it has helped it figure out That's all fair. kinds oh, of variances. Like, it can read your shitty said. handwriting. Ignore it. 
I totally get that. Anarch's handwriting is like astronomically bad. That's what I'm banking on. Okay, that's what I'm hoping. Maybe, maybe they wrote it in like a code, and they have to crack the code of like, like you know, the processing speed of the enemy is like astronomical. They can they can break the code. I just want there to be a scene like the the after the post credits of this episode is just like a bunch of like the Terminator Leos like trying to like yes. get into something like, like a Pixar style deal. Like where they I just, think like, can't figure out their way. I I believe this says tree. No, it says B. No, it says three. <laughs> exactly. What's wrong with this person? Was he a doctor? <laughs> yeah I, well i think i i think it's neat that they now have a personal cache of information about us from 10 years ago he <laughs> dexters <laughs> two uh, red cards what is this i, I was writing such black a cards during the game i was writing such a high I did a cool, sick move. <laughs> well, um, you did, you did, and you got a black card for it. You just also drew two red cards, buddy. Um, <laughs> uh, we have a, uh, we have our next game coming up um, with Katrina, but would we like to break a little bit early before we get into the game, or break a little bit later? How are you guys feeling? Now break. Now, break. Let's go. So, guys, we'll be back in five to ten minutes. Thank you guys so much for watching the first part, and we'll see you back here soon. Hey, everybody. We are back. Hey, folks. Thank you for waiting so patiently, uh, because now we get to go into our next game. Uh, Katrina, that leaves you to announce our next game. Tell us, what did you choose tonight? Sorry. <laughs> Why are you still muted? Mouth. Why would you do that? You're still, You're still muted. muted. <laughs> in, both, in both of the things. Oh, no. <laughs> Hello to our two new viewers. Okay, it's all right. You guys were spared uh, the sound of a belch. It really, it really paid off um, in my favor. <laughs> uh, all right, so today I have chosen to play... Um, what we once were with our captain. Um, uh, Cause I would love to look back on that relationship and, uh, and what made Leo so loyal that they decided to come back to uh, this wild crew. All right, I love that. Okay, so we ask each other, what moment triggered this flashback? Mm -hmm. I'm assuming, um, I actually don't know. Um, I, I, I'm a, Anarch is not in a good place, probably, uh, for a bit. Um, I honestly think uh, you probably find him working on the ship. Um, because I feel like Anarch, for a long time, hid that he could fix the ship. Like he would probably get up in the middle of the night and like work on stuff and just let everyone else assume that other people did it. But now that everyone knows like he has like reading glasses on that he hasn't worn in a very long time and it's just sort of like inside of a wall like half halfway mm -hmm. um so maybe if there's like a moment like that or i'm not sure yeah um cool yeah so maybe uh leo kind of um like of course stumbles upon Anarch um, while he's doing this. Um, and it may be, hmm. Like I'll say this is sometime after we've, we've you know, departed from, uh, you know, his home planet and we've left his village behind because turning back just wasn't, it wasn't in the question. Not viable, yeah. Um, so like we've had, maybe like a, a couple hours, maybe even like half a day to like kind of retreat and like think about things. And um, and Leo knows that Anarch has been uh, like alone since like that moment um, and no one's really come to bother Anarch. And so like, but despite this, Leo also is 
keenly aware of where Anarch is inside of the ship at all times because Leo only really needs to communicate with the ship to find out. So having waited what Leo determines is the appropriate amount of time um, <laughs> uh, based on like previous studies of interactions between humans, um, Leo tr seeks out the captain and finds him there and kind of just like pokes their head in and asks uh, what the captain is working on. Oh, um, I mean, we didn't get a chance to get repairs while we were there. Uh, thankfully, some of our neighbors had already put some stuff in here. So I'm working on circuitry, making sure that our shields will respond on time if we need to put them up. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, do you think that this may go faster if we make this a two-person job? Um, Anarch smiles. And he's like, yeah, of course. Um, you already know a lot about the ship. Do you need any extra instruction on what I'm doing or... I'm happy to start on the task immediately, but if you have any like spe any specific guidance, I'm also happy to follow that. Mm -hmm. Leo kind of like scooches in. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Anarch laughs. He's like, well, I've been finding that as the ship gets over older, if we wire too many things directly into the primary power source, uh, sometimes it can get temperamental. So I've been trying to route things through our secondary power and our secondary engines. Um, so maybe if you work on the primary power, I'll work on the secondary power and we can go from there. Of course, Captain. I can also search for a third power source should we ever need a backup. I think that'd be a really smart idea, Leo. Great. And then... So Leo's like position in starts kind of like uh, working on stuff. And um, I suppose maybe this triggers like a memory in them uh, of uh, mm -hmm. perhaps working together with a captain in the past. Yeah, like that. Yeah. So the player whose character fears the past the most takes the first turn. No, I don't want to automatically say that it's Anarch. <laughs> oh, no, I'm definitely thinking it's Anarch. Like, I feel like, like Leo feeling fear isn't anything revolving around them. Like, they have, they aren't compelled to feel, they don't know what fear is really yet. So, okay. Ooh, <laughs> these are very good. <laughs> I forgot how good these were. Mm -hmm. um, I love, based on this last episode, Anork was very adamant that he had to keep his mask up. So I kind of love a memory of pain. I revealed my heart to you, but you misunderstood my feelings in the worst way. I think there was a chance that Anarch had started to at least tell Leo that maybe there was like potentially something going on with his identity mm -hmm. and maybe Leo misunderstood or reiterated, I don't, I don't want to speak for your character, but I feel like it was something like, um, if you help me build this, the scene, like this is something where they were working on something, but Anarch was feigning ignorance and sort of assisting Leo versus, right. um, uh, versus Anarch and Leo working together. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yeah, I so I, I think, um, uh, I yeah, in that instance, maybe Leo, instead of like, like not catching on the subtleties, like Leo took everything 
in a literal sense or thought like maybe maybe anarch did that thing where like he started talking in like euphemisms and leo was like what do you mean the primary drive is off kilter let me go check that out like and, and it <laughs> was an opportunity maybe that like leo didn't realize in the instance but like maybe even hours later and this is like maybe a little my my neurodivergent tendencies playing into this character but like hours later it really dawned on them that that was a chance to connect um and it's so it's a remaining regret for mm -hmm. them like they feel like they messed Oof. up that interaction there's no way to get it back and like that's that maybe like hurt their their chances of like being a trusted companion to the captain hmm. Yeah, I think I, I love that idea. And I think it comes from Anarch being, I think what like exactly it was is like Anarch is in this quiet moment um, and Anarch is helping put like hold something in place while Leo's working on it. Mm -hmm. And I think what he, what he says that can be easily uh, sort of misgiven is like um, other, something, something else is just, uh, do you ever um do you ever think about uh the ways people um lie so they can um so they can get stuff done, Leo? When such as when they are trying to swindle you? Uh yeah, you know, I mean <laughs> Sometimes that's not the only context for a, for a lie. I mean, sometimes people uh, lie to, to help others. Isn't lying supposed to be a bad thing? It, it registers as negative in every learning receptor I have. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah, you. It wouldn't be great for anyone to really lie to you. I'd hate it if people were lying to you. I'd think that those people are kind of the worst people around. Is that how, is that how you would feel if people were lying to me or to you? Uh, <laughs> uh, people lying to me is kind of part of the course. You know, we're facing people, enemies all the time. So, you know, we got to be, expect deception. I understand, Captain. Though it is assuring, reassuring that you have this protective nature in you, that you don't seem to want people to lie to me. Though my receptors will be able to detect a lie um, uh, 999 times. Uh, out of 1,000. So I guess someone has to be a very, very good liar to believe what their lie is to get past you, Leo. Yes. I pride myself in having that sort of advanced technology. <laughs> it's pretty good, you know, um, for it's probably also mixing with your intuition as you interact with people more. I would like to hope so. Uh, I learn with every interaction I have, which has been very helpful with this group. I feel as though this has been a better chance to, and like Leo kind of, you know, this robot never hesitates, but like now for a moment, they hesitate on this world, on this, this particular word. Um, um, and they almost say the word become and you see you like hear it coming off of their tongue and they stop and reconsider it and recalibrate and then they say learn about how humans interact um i think anarch in that very like small moment where he looks kind of tortured for whatever reason um leo living as yourself i can see how very very human you are 
I think that if you want those bits of living honestly, living your truth, it has so much value. And Leo kind of lets this like set in. It's like a moment of, you know, when you get like a really big approval at work or something, it's like that, but like more intense because the captain Leo feels is their friend as well. Um, and Leo stops and this like small smile breaks out on their face and they give the captain a nod and say, that does mean a lot coming from the most human person I know. <laughs> And our glass and just sort of like again, like a little bit of that sheds off of him and he starts to refocus. And I think that's how the flashback sort of fades out um, while they're working. And I think like there's that look on his face as he's thinking about that memory and he's like, um, <laughs> weird conversation we had the last time we were fixing the ship together. <laughs> shouldn't have read the zoom chat <laughs> oh, no, no. I'm sorry, I'm oh my god Claire, please <laughs> I'm so, I'm so glad Leo, I'm so... sorry this is a joke for us <laughs> <laughs> this one stays. <laughs> yes, we'll keep it there. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> all right. Oh, who? Where was it going? <laughs> well, there was a there right. was that memory of pain. <laughs> Pretty painful memory. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I think like. Leo kind of like do do you think they they may have like just had a whole discussion about that or like you know captain brought it I up think I think way. um I think the captain would have brought it up of like in general but not got into details about the stuff that they remember I think he brings it up um to sort of mention that like you know he he, he missed he missed that memory more than discuss it in detail of like I was trying to talk to you about this and I think that like that mention is kind of it sparks that that same memory in Leo and that reminder of like what Leo sort of missed out on so they kind of see this as a chance again to connect um but they didn't expect because you know they were planning to come here and work next to the captain as a way to keep him company um after a traumatic event but now it's kind of like Oh, okay, you know, we can we can do this. This might be good for both of us. Um so um uh I think is that that set. Um do we want to do another uh, so you're going to choose a memory of pain or strength. Mm, I'm going to choose. <laughs> Oh, you know, um, I think I I was willing to draw, to die for the crew and protect what was most important, um, and and like that I think was like I don't know I feel like Leo wanting to like become human saw sacrifice as like a, an intrinsically human act, um, and that's what like sort of led them to that that thing where you know it's like it, the the moment came and for their crew they were ready to to do that um uh and then like how did you how did you convince me in that moment to like stop and that my life meant something um if we want to build up a scene i feel like yeah. i feel like it's something similar where we were running away yeah um to fight to live to fight another day and um sort of um it's this this plan to like we can make it we can make it um but you know enemies gaining on us and sort of um 
I feel like what what type what type of uh what type of thing do you think Leo would do to try and like get these enemies off of us? I'm sorry, I need to stop getting distracted by chat. Um, I think honestly, it's not so much like a a, a D word sacrificial thing. It was you know maybe we're running from this enemy, and Leo has kind of like assessed the terrain, assessed the number of enemies behind them what our capabilities are as a crew and what they can do by themselves. And so their reasoning is like, maybe while you guys try to escape, try to get the ship going, I'll stay here and take heavy fire. Um, And there's a chance that I won't survive this, but if anyone were to stay here and take heavy fire and survive it, perhaps that would be me. Mm, That's painful, I love that. Um, then I think what happens is I think the crew does get ahead and Anar takes stock, notices uh, that um, Leo is not there. And then he is tearing, like tearing up the ground, trying to get back. Um, <laughs> and I feel like... Uh, if it's okay, like he'd probably tr- tackle Leo into like cover, like mm-hmm. trying to like help like take down their pursuers. And he is panicked and like his heart rate is elevated and there is no charm, no decorum. He is just grabbing at Leo's shoulder and says, what are you doing? Oh, uh, and then you know, Leo is, has, like, by now, you know, they're, they're out of range from, like, the other, the enemies, maybe not even, like, Leo's, maybe they're just, like, locals that we upset, um, (laughs) like, like, nobody wants to die here, is the scenario I'm setting up, is, like, Leo doesn't want them to die, they don't want themselves to, like, you know, lose the crew, so it was, like, that's why they made that, that decision where it's, like, I'm gonna be the wedge here, so nobody gets hurt on other side or something, um, And like every step they've taken until now seems logical. It seems like the, the the one you should take the decision you should make in order to provide for your crew and like, and have a successful mission. And so when they stop and like feel all of these things coming from the captain, like feeling that heart rate ignite and like take off all that logic stops making so much sense. Um, Because this again, intrinsically is like the human reaction that like leo maybe has sought to understand but now understands now that it was it's being directed at them and their welfare and their safety and so for that moment you kind of see maybe not like you know pupils or anything but the expression that's usually cold to see the 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 stare forward kind of like lowers and like this like soft expression that like that gives off this sense of not just caring, but being a little shaken by that reaction kind of appears on Leo's face. And Leo sits up to guard the captain and kind of like takes whatever fire, like arrows or, you know, blasters or whatever's coming at him, like rocks, whatever's coming at her or them. Um, and and they reach out a hand and say, thank you, captain. And uh, And then they say, I didn't expect you to come back but it means a lot. Leo. And I think Anarch um, is sort of, again, shaken, like is un- is unsure what to do as Leo takes more shots and Anarch sort of grabs Leo and like um, stronger than uh, you expect with the way that Anarch acts, so aloof, so reckless, more speed-based, drags Leo uh, with... with um him to another like crumbling place to sort of hide from this blaster fire and he's just like of course i came back you haven't even gotten to do anything yet what are you doing we still (laughs) you have so much to still do and you're back here with these bozos Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> um, 
Yeah, and, and Leo is just like watching Captain catch his breath, and like you know, Leo's not not overexerted at all. It's nothing has changed, <laughs> except for that expression on their face. It's it's you know, even though nothing else about them operating and like the way their body functions and how they're moving, that's not human. But like that that expression on their face is held true, and and uh, it's you know, it's a moment that I think Leo. We'll, we'll note we'll note to the captain like you know i i haven't been ta- treated as part of a crew or a team or anything since my birth uh i was not even treated as someone's child and so <clears throat> clear that throat too um and so uh <laughs> leo Leo like once again take the, takes the captain captain's hand in like both of theirs and and says like but I'm loyal to this crew this is my family now and you've taught me that yeah and I got so much more to teach you because family goes both ways and right now what we're gonna teach you is how to do zigzag running we got to get away from this place you have so Understood. much more to do and i'm so mad at you don't think that the smile is not mad i am mad consequences for your actions and um but like he's grinning he is so happy to hear what they just said <laughs> um and um and Ark sort of like takes a deep breath um picks up a hunk of rubble and with his mouth makes a beeping sound like it's like a like a grenade and goes beep 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 and throws it and um you hear you hear them say hold on explosive and anarch's like go yeah it was just like (laughs) (laughs) i like that leo's always running away in these scenarios (laughs) Just like this, like Forrest Gump job. I don't think I have. don't think we've had like a single confrontation where the team hasn't run away. Um, <laughs> it makes it hard to it makes it a little hard to believe um, <laughs> that like we've ever like uh, like on front confronted people. But like, who knows? You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I really, I really love that. <laughs> thank you for having that moment with me of course <laughs> um do you want to go to another memory or do we want to head to a revelation mm-hmm. let's look at let's look at the memories we did one of straight let's do one more with pain how's that sound <laughs> I mean, if you have one in mind, I'm totally cool with that. Maybe. I feel like together we made a promise and together we broke it is a really good one. It's sparking something about like maybe how everything went down beforehand and like maybe Leo and Anarch had to make some sort of decision um, that like they told each other they would never, they would never do. Like they would never like go separate ways like because of that last memory yeah. it's like leo would never leave the crew and anarch ever again and like maybe that's a decision that leo makes <laughs> I like, yeah i think that i think that's a great um i feel like it's it's probably a promise of like after after everything um you know we're gonna be a family and i'm gonna show you all the what all the like (laughs) all the bad and greasy parts of being a human and all the great and wonderful bits of like being a person (laughs) are you x card are you x carding greasy no i just (laughs) Just greasy. Just greasy. Such a description. <laughs> <laughs> it's I, cool. I'm not actually 
actually. It's like, hey, like, I just went like, I just feel a little <laughs> greasy. You know, we want to get that grease feeling that all humans have. Hey, baby, let me teach you how to be greasy. Yeah? <laughs> I hate this. I get all greasy with it. <laughs> greasy is what's called when you like slip into another term. persona for your like alternate, uh, like, uh, AKA alias over here, right? That's what the grease is. <laughs> Yeah. Leah, what Leah, you want to do is get real greasy with voice. it. Leah's like, you know, I'm only really gre- greasy around the T zone. That's that's all. <laughs> I really don't. I like to imagine Leo's like, oh, greasy takes like a Five Guys burger. It's just like, no. <laughs> yes. Here, you've got a moisturize. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna. <laughs> that conversation is not You're... there. That conversation is ending there. I regret my word choices. All the negative and positive parts of being a human because it's all about the full experience. <laughs> um, and I think just with the way that people have shattered, I think there was a choice of like, I don't think I'm qualified to teach you anything. Um, so do you want to, I, I feel like that's, like that's this that's the that flashback is like the this the crew the crew splitting up Mm -hmm. um i think it happened in the hallway that we're working in again yeah i like that Mm. yeah um cool so let's see uh and so i think that's why right now after all those nice memories that promise is like it's kind of set in to start haunting us again you know oh yeah um but how do you think that's haunted us all these years i feel like anarch straight up says it and just sort of like um is looking at this panel that they've both worked on because they've been working quietly and stewing in these memories that they've been sort of like talking about quietly between them and then he looks back and then he looks over at leo and he says i'm sorry i let you down and leo kind of like slows their role on their maintenance um and doesn't look back quite yet, it just takes a couple moments, takes a beat to let it set in. And then they respond, I'm sorry for leaving. You had every right to go. I was a mess. Everyone else was leaving. And I remember you walked up to me in that hallway and I looked at you and I was just like, well, you ditching me too. At the time, it was the only logical decision. Yeah, I was hoping back then he'd be a little bit more illogical. It took me a little while. And they're like doing some like beeps and boops and, you know, working. And then they're, they're like, but I feel that being illogical is something I've come to accept. I am here after all, Captain. Yeah, and I was the idiot who didn't reach out again. So we all needed time. Yeah. I don't think any of us would have come back without a little time. Yeah. Can I make that promise again? Yes. But uh, if you keep that, then I will make my, my promise as well. I'll stay this time. And the truth is, Leo has nowhere else to go. Um, but, you know, like, they mm. want to stay, even if they, you know, there is nowhere else that Leo wants to be outside of, like, this crew. Mm. 
And as sweet as that like scene is, I think that's how that promise starts haunting us again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that pressure. Oh yeah. The pressure to be uh, a different person for Anarch at least. Um, trying to be better. <laughs> mm-hmm. I love this. So out of the pair of us, who do you think revealed the most during these flashbacks? I think Leo actually ended up revealing the most. Um, I think especially in this moment where like Anarch, Anarch's whole life was just laid bare in front of the crew. So mm. I think Leo would be, uh, would feel more compelled to like share more and kind of like, give him that space to like be safe in i agree and i love that and that means that you choose a revelation the revelation is revelation music while i read um I like that first one because we're talking about that memory. So it, it seems like memories are frozen in time, but they suddenly crack under the pressure of the present. We both reveal something that changes the context of our memories. So maybe, maybe Leo brings up that they did, you know, they understood a little too late what Anarch was trying to say to them, but they didn't act on it. Oh, and I think um, for an arc, um, they reveal that like after the crew had split up, like that they had sort of kept tabs on Leo for like a lot longer um, than probably was perceived. Like how it's probably a lot easier for an to find Leo when they when this first started. And that um, he didn't do anything, like didn't reach out. Oh, my heart. Yeah, wolf. <laughs> um, some revelations. There we are. Yeah. The book in the Bible. <laughs> very good all right at the end of this mini game we draw our cards okay katrina your card is red oh, oh. oh. okay oh my okay so that means the enemy the enemy gets stronger right so yes um the enemy gets stronger by, well, they have access to Leo in some way, and they've cracked maybe another level of access um, when it comes to Leo. Like, maybe they, they're, they're, like, kind of aware of, like, the, the location, um, generally, like, the system or whatever that they're in, but maybe this time they're, they crack open, like, the the what leo has learned as a combatant in the time like from since 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 they run they've run away to like now not good to load all of leo's moves into some uh, some other robots does yep. leo know this has happened ooh um no maybe not yet Yike. oh <laughs> maybe, maybe like us. this is something leo yeah, maybe Rascal this is something act. they have to discover. Like maybe next time they're like stationed or something, and it's like, oh, sh-. <laughs> like, oh no, it's happening. You're like, not supposed to know how to do that. Excuse me. Yep. How <laughs> did you get here? All right, Vic, you ready for your card? <laughs> yes. Black. Mm. Okay. Um, loyalty is regained. Um, I'm going to give this card to Katrina. <laughs> Um, and I think uh, in this moment where there has been admissions, where there's been admissions of knowledge known and not used, um, Anarch sort of 
um, looks at the work that they've done together, like in quiet, and then leans over and just bumps their arm against Leo. And it's just like, well, going forward, air is clear. And um, hey, I guess we get to be our true selves. Affirmative, Captain. <laughs> That's the moment of closeness for for Katrina to get that black card. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for the game. Likewise, thank you. That was so much fun. <laughs> Yay! All right, Hamna. It's your All turn. right, let's go. <laughs> I don't know why I did a little evil laugh like I have something evil planned. I don't. Uh, <laughs> sure you don't. Sure. I don't. I simply have vibes. Okay. The game that we're going to play is only if we have the time, Captain. What does my loyalty mean to you? Uh, this is a mini game for me uh, to address unfinished business, knowing that the captain is the only one who can help me. Uh, when I choose this mini game, we consider how this can drastically dramatically change the relationship between Liana and the captain. Um, others can join in whenever they want, uh, but the focus of this mini game is on Liana and the captain. So, to start, um, you and Leo have just sort of like done all of this work on the ship, right? You've managed mm -hmm. to sort of change the power supply, etc. Uh, what other tasks are there that the captain, like, needs to get done? I assume that, like, with the with the attack on your hometown, we've kind of, like, been pushed into this flurry of action. Like, we, it has become very apparent that the enemy is working and they are not stopping and that the threat is very, very imminent. We don't have as much time as we thought that we did in order to just kind of fuck around or do anything else. And so I imagine that we've all sort of like been doing a whole bunch of tasks, kind of like one after the other, like nonstop. So mm -hmm. what is it that you think that Anarch would be working on at this point in time? I think Anarch is monitoring um, uh, the information channels. I think he has been up for uh, God knows how long. Um, there are like several mugs around him and like he is seated in the cockpit where and just sort of like listening in on communications and sort of marking down where enemy movement is being and sort of like charting stuff. So I think I think that's what he's doing at this moment. Liana comes and finds Anarch uh, in this cockpit, looking over all of these channels, this barrage of information, and they stand in the doorway of the cockpit, very like straight back, shoulders back. Like they are putting on, I think, this air of composure. Uh, it's unclear whether it's for Anarch's benefit or their own, but it's there. And they look over at Anarch's back, I think, as he's kind of going through all of this information, and they just kind of, like, clear their throat. Uh, sorry. Um, and he looks back over his shoulder, and he gives this tired smile. He's like, you look like you're about to throw up. Me? No, I'm fine, um, I think. Yeah. Well, you look so stiff. I'm like, I'm not used to that. Anarch, Captain, yeah. I'm here as your crew crewmate right now to ask you for a favor. Um, Anarch stands up at that and pulls himself to his full, full height, sort of matches Liana's stance instead of being this tired person. He's like, your captain is listening. Mayor, can you draw us a card? And these draw, uh, card draws are a little bit different. We need the full information, the number and the color. And when we're done, the card goes to the bottom of the deck. Yes, so I have drawn the King of Spades. Ooh, Ooh. okay, okay. I think uh, you can see something sort of like shift in Liana's eyes just ever so briefly as you stand up and sort of mimic their own energy. And Liana, like, takes a step forward. I think their hands are, like, behind their back. Um, very, like, 
military business like kind of attention and he says to you we have a very dangerous mission ahead of us i think that much is clear to you and not all of us are well none of us really are prepared for it but i think that i want to help lopez lopez's right. suit keeps them alive and there's a lot that they are worried about in terms of their suit their suit malfunctioning their suit not being able to do its job just day to day let alone in the middle of a battle i want to help upgrade it all right where are we going that's it you're not gonna ask you're willing to just take time out to do this? I mean, we have it. Leon. There's a lot of things. I need all of you. If you think that this is important. Well, I also think that's important. No matter how Lopez feels about me, I. Um, they're very important to me, too. So, if you don't know where to go, I mean, I have a couple people I can reach out to. I've already tried that before. Um, while we were doing everything else, I actually managed to... Well, I looked through all of our contacts, and I tried to talk to our primary primary supplier for parts for the ship and i thought maybe they would know somebody who would be able to help with you know uh spacesuits and exoskeletons and things like that and well not all of our contacts are on our side anymore that is bad to hear i'm sorry that uh things didn't go exactly well probably no. And I mean, I guess this is maybe what I should have left, led with, but I think that there might be breaches in our ship, given that our contacts, not all of them can be trusted anymore. Have you done a sweep to make sure that there's nothing, no one spying <sighs> communication devices? Um, recently. A small creature with a, with a hat. Like a helmet? Yeah. Yeah, no. Um, uh, I haven't seen any cockroaches with helmets. Um, but <laughs> that's what it was from the first game, right? Cockroaches with helmets? It helmet. was, yes. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> um, I mean, while we were on planet, uh, we had a couple of those bullets had like trackers and stuff like that. But I haven't done an in depth sweep. I'm sure there's something we can get done. Um, but this room is secure. Okay. Then, yes. I think we need to go, but we have to be careful. I don't know who we can trust and how much information we can give. It wouldn't be wise for us to tell people why exactly we're looking for... Well, I think a stronger power cell will do it. Yeah. Less time for him to charge, maybe more confidence in the suit. Sounds great. Yeah. Oh, I, I, think Liana, you. I think Liana's face kind of softens at that. And there's like this very like tired wash of gratitude that kind of comes over them. As if like this is something that he's been kind of stressing about for a while and just has not told anybody about it. And for anarch to be so readily supportive and so like gung-ho about like going on this mission from the get-go no questions asked i think like means a lot to him and it's very clear on their face yeah um anarch i'm sorry dog was like growling out the window <laughs> i'll put down the shade if you can't behave um <laughs> no 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 window for you. 
Um, but I think um, Anarchy is that and sort of like, all right, let me grab two more cups of coffee and let's go over what we need to do. Thank you. And as the two of them kind of, I think the preparations probably are just happening like in the cockpit. I think a lot of it is mostly information gathering in order to prepare for this mission. It's about knowing who to contact, knowing where to go, knowing what exactly that person who has this power cell would want in exchange for it and how to acquire those materials. It's, it's really just information gathering. So I think all of yeah. it can be done in the cockpit. But as we're sort of preparing for the mission, I think Liana is very distracted throughout it all. There's, he's trying very hard to focus and to be helpful, but Anarch has had to like repeat himself like multiple times, has had to like uh, explain things over and over to Liana, things that you know that they should be able to understand the first time that you explain it, but their mind is kind of somewhere else. And so, I think as uh, we're sort of like gathering this information, we spent a lot of time together in this cockpit, going through databases, going like calling people, etc. And in the time that has passed between us, I think it becomes clear that there is like an like a mountain of time, really, that has passed between us. Not mm -hmm. necessarily here in this moment, but just in general. Yeah, and that kind of creates this sense of. Actually, you tell me. Is it a sense of distance or is it a sense of closeness that that brings for Anarch? I think um, knowing that he is not the only person who has changed dramatically makes him feel closer to Liana. Um, especially because um, his whole sense of identity has been uprooted to, to be shown for everyone. And sort of like he can note that change and sort of like feel like he can track it through time. I mean, uh, but there's like one bit that feels like that he keeps expecting to see, but I don't think it, um, I think it's gone. You know, um, I think um, something about Liana it, um, that Anarch keeps expecting to see is like this sort of like almost like a loud fervor um, something like a like a passion that Liana had that sort of burned brightly and sort of Anarch notes that it's different now um but what's taken its place is a sort of responsibility. I think the sense of almost like a sense that like Liana is reaching out and creating more space, more connections with other people. And um, and Arc takes note, he's like, you know, for someone who, from someone who's tried to stay the same over these past years and failed miserably, we were both really young when this started. I see, um, well, maturity looks good on you, kid. I think Liana was like busy going through like a list of people as Anarch says this, and they kind of stop mid task and they don't look over at Anarch. But I think you can see that their shoulders kind of tense up a little bit. And you are on the side of them where, um, where their tat like where their sleeve is, mm -hmm. and there's something different even about their tattoo from I think the last time that the crew was together. Before their tattoo used to I think be like really really bright in its coloration always, and it was like constantly shifting in colors. And mm -hmm. I think you notice as you're even saying this that the colors are much more muted than they used to be. And they don't, they don't actually even shift that often. It's hmm. as if uh, like rapids had been turned into like a very slow movement of a river, essentially. And Liana kind of just quietly says over to Anarch, I don't know if it's maturity so much as it is just grief. 
Mm -hmm. Keep me reading these things. Grief is powerful, but um, how are you using it right now? Is there a difference between grief and maturity? And Liana looks at you. In your eyes, their piercing green eyes, like, boring into you. Ignoring your question entirely. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I feel really childish right now. I think I've been grieving for the last 20 years. Myself, my brother any sense of semblance of my dreams that I thought I was going to go for. Doesn't feel very mature right now to have looked up and realized that, hey, maybe things would have been fine if I chose some other way. But I can't go back and change it now. You took think a lot of responsibility onto yourself back then didn't you when you're when anarch you used to call them annie <laughs> because um the other people would call him anarchy um and would piss him off because he was going you know he was trying to be a captain he's trying to sort of show that he was able to um a little bigger squadron. It seems a bit on the nose, don't you think? I loved it. I thought it was hilarious. And I told him that, like, maybe he should lean into it. Um, Did he? No. Uh, Lopez really would have gone along with him. Very straight laced, very serious. Um, big hero type. Not really, not reckless or desperate. I wish that I could have gotten to know him. I wish that I could have met him. Yeah, you would have liked him. I also wish that I could have gotten to know you. For all that I've tried to emulate my brother, um, there's a lot of this that is just me. <laughs> Immature okay, and grief stricken. Lay it out for me then. Which parts are you? Which parts are Annie? <laughs> so, uh, piloting stuff, engineering. Any of the uh, subtle, um, stupid uh, suggestions that seem uninformed, um, that was me. The reason that I wasn't three years in the military is because I spent two and a half years finishing up my uh, military engineering, licensing and everything. So I wasn't out in like squadrons or anything because... I was learning how to pilot ships, how to make them work, how to push that drive that extra little bit. And so all those things that were maybe me acting up a little bit more like, oh, I don't know how to use this machine, but I will overclock it. No, that was all me. Um, Spootball, love, that was me. And he hated sports, which is very funny. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh well he couldn't eat uh fish he hated it absolutely hated it until my mom found out uh that i was uh the one that was alive from a newscast <laughs> like 50 systems over that she saw. Um, that would be a shock 
to anybody. I mean, I would know. Yeah. It's a funny way to deal with grief, to take on the identity of the person you're grieving, but I don't think I can do that. I can't just pretend to be Lopez. I don't think Lopez would want you to do that. And, and I um, think Liana just kind of like shakes their head and like looks back at the screen, like kind of pointedly, like not making eye contact with Anarch anymore. This will help, right? I think it'll make him, I think it'll make them pretty happy. Um, but your grief is yours, Liana. You have to be responsible for your own emotions. It's a luxury I don't think I have. Funny thing, calling responsibility a luxury. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I think, um, and I think Liana just kind of like, Changes the subject entirely because they have gotten far too uncomfortable with uh, with the like uh, with the level of vulnerability that is being required of them in this conversation, and I think he just kind of like cha like tries to change the subject and just kind of goes back to talking about preparations for the mission. <clears throat> and so, uh, when we decide to leave the ship, when we finished all of our preparations and figured out like where we need to go, who we need to talk to. Question for the rest of the crew. Does anyone else want to come along? Are you guys leaving for the mission right now? Yes. OK. Uh... Call Leo over. They're ready. <laughs> OK, Leo, you should go. Lopez and I got this. <laughs> How it stays well, I want to ask so Cleric as well. Do you want to? Oh, no, I think, I think Lopez doesn't know what you're doing. So yeah. it's kind of just like, do you really think now is the, the best time to go and get stuff? You it's guys important. like doing a... Oh, and I think Lopez like hears that tone of voice. So he was like, oh, okay, if... If it's important, then it's important. I think me and uh, Mulatto will just like guard the ship and get ready to bug out in case anything. I got to work on the gun anyway because it's got damaged in the last uh, in the in the last firefight. So I want to yeah, make sure we got to do some calibration. Go. So you guys go ahead and do the last truck stop before the exit. Yeah. <laughs> Can you pick me up some Spritos? Is that the kind of thing we're doing, or is this like an actual run for something? We'll make time. I'll find I'll find a convenience store. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. I was like, I a I think a, 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 a spreven. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, a spreven a spleven would actually yeah, be. What are you for a spleven a spleven or a spwawa? A spleven a spleven. Yeah. A spwawa. <laughs> <laughs> I'm for a speets. I don't know if you ever been. If you ever had that. Uh spwawa just absolutely annihilates speets. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I we know could some always people go are... to the Spuckies, but like that's too big. Yeah, I don't know. That's I in like feel certain areas so of space. I don't know. I don't know what half these stores <laughs> are. What's a, what's a Wawa? It's oh, a one day you're gonna come here. We're gonna take you. It's gonna be great. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, me, the only non-American. I almost wore my Wawa shirt to the stream. I should have. That would have been so funny. Oh, Wait, why you did I change at the shirt? last? Yeah, it is can... a, it is more than a gas station. It's, <laughs> it's a way of life, later. Hamna. It's a yes, way of life. A lifestyle. Am... Okay. So okay, concerned. this is this is lore that we will get to later. <laughs> yeah. uh, this is like lore for a real yeah. life. I'll wear my Wawa shirt next stream. We'll yeah, ask that but... later. Uh, uh, <laughs> anyway. I think after that, just like but it's like I actually uh real quick, if, if I can just take Liana, just I want to ask, give more of the list to Liliana real quick. Uh, and like pulls you aside. Go for it. Uh, yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm joking about the list. You don't have to actually get me spritos. You, you, you don't. Oh, thank God. Yeah, I, I know it's very difficult to find them out here. To be honest, um, you've I, tried. 
I've, I've tried a little bit. Uh, <laughs> it's very difficult. I try to do spoo eats. It doesn't really work. Um, nice to know that that's where our resources are going towards at this time. But anyway, I have, sorry. Oh, I have some extra left over. You know, I have to special order some food on there that, you know, it's, it's it, it, no, okay. I understand. I, I understand. No, it's, it's, it's okay. I, but no, sorry. I, I don't have to give me Sprinos. I just, um, I don't know where you're going. I know you're going on just a run for something. I don't know how dangerous it is or whatever, but, uh, be um be safe are you worried about me you know the normal amount of worried i mean you're going out with anarch and leo that's always going to be a something always explodes when those two go up together so so you've told the others to be safe as well uh no i i, I can go tell them that i think i do I, I mean it's a friendly uh, caution that should be had for everyone, but I'd want you to be specifically super safe. And I think Leona just kind of like smiles to himself um, at this, at, at Lopez sputtering in front of them, uh, which is extremely amusing to him, I think. And if it's okay with you, I think uh, Leona mm -hmm. like takes your hand and just kind of like squeezes it. I think at first if you feel you feel like Lopez try to pull away, but then you see them get like grip your hand, like take their hand and put it on the like grip it like a little bit harder. Like reciprocates the grip and it's like Yeah. Uh be go, yeah. Yeah. And don't give Meleta a hard time, okay? I have a lot to apologize to Meleta for. So I think I'll be very nice this i think I'll, I'll help them out with the repairs a little bit better this time i'll see you soon okay okay and they leave and i think Question? as yeah finish your thought yeah i think as you like you're walking away you just see like them being like quick quick talk that was uh Not the self pep talk. Oh my god, that's so cute. Okay. How far did these two go to talk? How far did you take me? Probably you, not you that far, to be me. honest. They thought it was private, but definitely not. Anarch is like Anarch is like peering past Leo, like as Liana's walking back to like look at Lopez and just sort of like slowly like. <laughs> uh, don't don't do anything stupid. You two, three, three. Two. <clears throat> I'm never stupid. No, anyway. you're not stupid. No, no, you're not. You're not stupid. You're, you're not. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go work on gun over there. Holy. Um, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> yep. You got I, this, buddy. Yeah. Gun hits. Turns around. Hits head. Uh, hits helmet right on like the uh, door frame. Just ooh, ah, ooh. yes. <clears throat> yeah. I love how these two are very poorly kept secret amongst the crew. Oh, they're the ones that get together in like season five, and everyone's like, Finally, god, mm -hmm. <laughs> it like, it's the slow burn. Anyway, I love the slow burn. Um, <laughs> so, oh. for Leo and Anarch, what weapons or equipment are we bringing on this mission? Um, I think because. It's supposed to be like a sneaky, sneaky mission, right? Sneaky, sneaky, yeah. Yeah, I think um, Anarch. I think Anarch pulls out a rifle that you've um, that you've seen him use before, um, but a long time ago. And it, it is a it is a collapsible like sniper rifle. Yeah, and all right, all right. Yeah. Uh... I think Leo will follow that with um, uh, uh, like a, a shotgun style blaster, um, kind of just strapped to their back instead of the dual pistol. So, so. Long distance, That's short fun. distance. Yeah. Magic y. <laughs> I've got the power of tentacles on my side. <laughs> 
I got I the power right now. Like, like, like yeah, Leo literally like, super strong. So like the gun is really there for like decoration. They're not the type of person who pulls out blasters easily when they can just like hell yeah. Yeah. I love this. All right. And as we uh fly close to our destination on our shuttle, just the three of us kind of like on this little escape pod going into this. I think we're probably on like a different kind of planet. So like one that was really way out of the way, like not remotely on our way to where we were going to face the enemy at all. Like we had to take like a detour in order to get here. What do we see as we fly close to our destination? I would like to offer something, a complication to our mission. Um, potentially we were trying to like sneak in, maybe, maybe potentially steal this upgrade for Lopez. Um, someone got here first and whatever this like shipyard, where shipyard that we we're looking at is up in flames and there are marauder vessels nearby. And then it's I was the like, oh. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. We found it. <laughs> <laughs> Guess what happens when you don't pay your protection dues? <laughs> Everything you own is now ours. Have you guys ever watched Ed, Ed, and Eddie? Like, I like the Kanger Sisters? About, I guess. I keep thinking about the Kanger Sisters, but they're like grown up and now they're like the bridesmaids. I love that. <laughs> Oh my god, uh, Mayor, can you please uh, give us a card sure. for our first of three? Okay. No, uh, so we draw three cards at once. Oh, at once. Yeah. So we, oh, okay, yeah. okay. And so we and we take turns. Oh, wait, actually, no, you're right. It's one, I one by one. I thought it was like one for you're one right. thing happens. It is and one then, by one. Yeah, okay. 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 Uh, I still have drawn them all, but I will tell you one by one. Just let me know when you want the next one. So the first card I drew, uh, is it just the suit? We, yeah, just Both. the suit, and then at the end of it, we need to know oh, the okay. numbers. Okay, that the, works too. The first suit is hearts. Okay. Um, since there's three of us, I think all three of us can take a turn and do it. Um, yeah. So I'll go first, and then you y'all can sort of take your turns as needed. Um, oh, no. Maybe I shouldn't have picked first. <laughs> okay, I just looked at the and I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think as we're flying to um like as we're going down and we've like just landed on this planet, uh we've just seen this warehouse like up in flames, like it's engulfing literally everything. And I think the fire is starting to spread to like other parts, like other buildings that are nearby as well. And I think <laughs> Liana, who has been so like they have had a stick up their ass over about this, so stressed out this whole time, something breaks in him as he sees this scene because i think when they come up to it they think no 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 this can't be happening this cannot be happening and he like like goes to like run out of the shuttle i think like grabbing as many like just like uh like a bag that we were going to use like a box to grab the power cell in as we're going and as they're running out i think they sort of like yell out this cannot be happening to Lopez. And Liana is like in tears, panicking as they're running out. I think Anarch has to like chase after them and grab Liana by the arm. And it's just like in this smoke, you will not be able to see anything. We have Let to Let me think. go. No, we can, Liana. we can still, we can, we have to go now. If we don't go We're, now, Liana. everything will burn. We will grab it, but we need to figure out what building it's in. Listen, I know what you're feeling. I get it. We will get this done. If we don't get it, we have, we have to get it. Yeah. Yeah. So take a second. We need to check our. We need to check it. We need to check our scanners. If we can scan this area, even past this heat, we might be able to find where it is. Get in, get out before these marauders know what's going on. Yeah, Leo will okay. step up here and say that they're happy to like do the signature scanning since their stuff is probably more advanced. 
Yeah. There we go. See? We're a team. You can't run off by yourself. Okay. Okay. But please hurry. And, and so I think Leo, we like, grab... does their scan of the area. And I think we have a card draw technically here, right? Maybe? Would yes. this be a draw? All right. Yeah. Leo, the suit you have is clubs. Okay, so you can choose. Either one of us goes too far and gives into our passions, or there are explosions, lots of them. Was this planned or spontaneous? Ooh, okay. Dang it. Why can't I have both? Um, <laughs> uh, I vote we can do both. Really? Yeah, because yeah, I think this really stop us. Works. Yeah, this works for both. Um, maybe because of those spontaneous passions, explosion explosions happen. Right. Well, we both know who's gonna give into passions and go too far, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We all know that, about? right? What are you talking about? <laughs> Is it? I think. Sorry, go. No, no, I was just gonna continue the bit. Um... I'm stopping your bit right now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly excuse you i think like as uh leo is scanning the facilities like maybe it's just taking like a beat too long for liana it's honestly not actually taking that long in objectively speaking but i think liana is just so in their feelings and so panicked at this moment that like even two seconds is two seconds too long and they kind of like wrench their hand out of anarch's grasp and i think they go we don't have time for this and they run in towards the building. And I think as they're doing so, their eyes kind of like go bright white. Their irises and their pupils disappear. There's just white scleras and they start to glow a little bit. And as they do so, I think these like veins of white light start to like thread through their body. And you can see on their arms, which is like the only part of exposed skin that they have, you can see these, this, these threads of light start to shoot through. And as they do so, shadows start to form underneath the buildings and like shadowy i think like tentacles start to crawl out from underneath the earth underneath the ground and start to lash at this building Whoa. is that is that why there's suddenly explosives probably <laughs> um i think anarch is like it's like half running between Liana, half waiting on Leo's scans when all this shit starts happening and all the booms and he starts and he's he has to start taking out like his his rifle because something is I feel like I feel like everyone's attention is suddenly on the building on them and everything is going to hell in a hand basket. Leo, what do your scans tell us? Uh, I would say that our, the, the skins, like maybe what I find or like where I find what we're looking for is kind of already destroyed. And we have to go into like the, the semi burning rubble of it all and try to find it while these people close in on us. I love this. <laughs> All right. Liana's too far away, I think, to, for to have this information communicated to them. So that's on between the that's two on, of you right now. That's on y'all right now. Um, Mer, <laughs> I am. I have a suit in my mind that I want, and I'm. I, I'm, I think I know I'm what you're thinking it is to you. because it's the one that would be most thematically appropriate. Is it spades? Yes, because <laughs> you got spades. <laughs> So, uh, Hamla, you know how uh, the captain somehow caused that scar on Liana's face? Yeah, I think um, Anarch, in his desperation, is like, we cannot go calm Liana and get this thing. So he looks at Leo and he's like, Leo, go calm Liana. I know that you can resist heat. I know that you can resist this heat, everything. I will go and grab the battery. Yes. And um, Anarch, um, um, because he just, uh, he thinks that, he, he just makes a split second decision. I think he makes the wrong decision. But you know what? 
people make mistakes and he goes and um i think uh when he sort of heads into this building that is half collapsing half on fire he grabs what they need and then something falls on him oh no i want this to be liana's fault um i think (laughs) one of the tentacles that are thrashing around this building hit a Mm -hmm. beam he had a support beam and that beam falls on anarch i love this so now mayor i need to know what the highest number is of those three cards that we drew i'm gonna tell you what y'all draw for all of them you got a nine and two jacks holy shit hey the mission is a success somehow i think (laughs) yeah um i think it's because anarch is able to actually get out under his own power and sort of keep moving um i think he has uh put on like like a helmet to currently hide his face um and uh he is sort of howling for them to like get moving that like uh, that he has the battery that this is you know we can we can get out of here i think he's firing off his rifle to like get these bachelorettes out of the way um <laughs> what's going on with leo liana uh yeah so um leo having been tasked with with calming someone down which is not necessarily a leo thing um is attempting to just like get uh uh liana's attention within like the the chaos so like they're they're trying to like go after like maybe even run after some of the tentacles and like slap them or something (laughs) like hey hey pay attention to me look at me center on me like focus on something uh instead of like letting your focus go like all over the place I think you managed to get Liana's attention. I think they like just whirl around like to look at you as you are sort of running around in this space uh, around like between the flames, between all of the tentacles, this dark matter. And there is like a frenzied look on his face as he looks at you. But there's like a glimmer of recognition, I think. I think the lights in their eyes flicker once and you see just for a second, just like the regular green eyes of Liana just for a moment. Ooh. And I think that, like, you know, the accuracy of, of you know, Leo's sight manages to catch that. Um, and and so they, Liana continues and says, that's right, you're here. I'm here right now in front of you. We're here together. And if we get through this, we'll be doing it together. That's the only way we can get through this. So I need you to be here right now so that we can be with the crew later. And then Leo stops and says, so that you can be with Lopez later. I think before you had said the last thing that you had said, mm-hmm. Liana had, because their magic and their attention is now focused on you, I think you in particular had started to be encircled by these shadowy tentacles in particular. And mm-hmm. I think they had grabbed Leo and kind of like raised her up off of the ground as you were talking, as you were so calmly trying to bring Liana back. And it wasn't until you said that last line that I think something hit Liana. And when you say that, the lights start to fade away from their skin, start to fade away from their eyes, and the tentacles, I think, like, drop. And Leo starts to fall to the ground. And Liana kind of, like, runs over and, like, like, breaks Leo's fall, like, tries to catch them yeah and i think like leo will like reach up and and, like try to catch themselves as well on liana um and they'll maybe like falter a little or whatever but you know they'll use liana's height um to kind of straighten back up and and with that like because they're already touching if you're all right with it that leo will like keep their hands on his shoulders and and say like um uh, it's good to have you back with me again. I don't think Leona is capable of words mm-hmm. in this state, in this That's place. Fine. I think they have gone nonverbal, mm-hmm. and they are just kind of staring at you with this wide-eyed look 
of like shock and horror as they're going through this. I think that at that moment, that's when the um, Anarch remembers communication devices <laughs> and um, a very pained, uh, desperate voice comes over. He's like, I got it. Get out of there. You're in the wrong place. I got it. We need to get back. Yeah. And Leo gets that message and kind of turns their head immediately in like that direction. Um, and then they they reach down to maybe take Leona's hand and hurry toward the captain to to uh, to save him. Yeah, you kind of have uh, to like drag them, yeah. drag them back onto the ship because they are not necessarily fully capable of just walking themselves or running themselves back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and I think um, Anarch is already in the in the cockpit. Uh, he has the bag for the battery like back where liana would be sitting and um he's sort of hunched over it and and sort of as soon as they're in the as soon as they're in the ship door closed without concern of them getting to a seat he punches it to get out of there when you come back are you still wearing that helmet oh yeah I think as you come back, um, I'd like to think that maybe we are all like communed at this point. Like we all kind of run in and maybe like Lopez and Mleta like notice that we're all like running in and like saw all of that kind of happen outside. And we're all sort of like in a communal space. Um, you plop this bag onto the table in the middle of us. And Leanna just kind of like looks up very, very slowly, painfully slowly lifts their head to look up at Anarch. Why are you wearing that? Uh, smoke inhalation. I just, um, it, it, it's uh, clearing my, uh, clearing the air right now. And while this has been happening, while this whole mission has been happening, I'm very curious if we may take a brief jump cut. What is happening between Lopez and Maletta? Y'all are just on the ship by yourselves. Oh, yeah. I've been totally just like gently dragging Lopez for how adorable y'all are. <laughs> I, 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 we're not like, uh -huh. I, I, no, like, I, no, sure, do yeah. I like mm -hmm. he's cool and stuff but like so not cool. not in you know this, there's a lot of things going on with me Many that i don't things. know if i'm ready if if i'm ready for him or he or if if like they i, under, I like, think i think I, that y'all been ready for a long time now but like what <laughs> what if what if what mm. Again, I like to imagine this is a six foot eight, just mechazoid yes. person, just sitting, just like I. So cute. I, I, I I'm just. It's a lot, you know. It's a lot. We're in like a death mission, and you know right, I. But like the way you feel doesn't take a break while you're in danger. If anything else, the danger kind of heightens it, doesn't it? All right, suspension bridge effect. I mean, yeah. I mean, have I seen uh, his rippling fucking muscles as he like does stuff and like working oh, on the yeah. ship? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Has it been fucking like super, like just interesting to see him reading like a book and just like sometimes interesting like, do is, this, like, is this one way of with describing his, like, that. Yeah, it's yeah. like sometimes when he's reading a book, he'll like do this little twitch and it's just like, mm -hmm. wow. I know you're like really getting into it. Um, but oh, but everyone does that. Try everyone, to get everyone, no, everyone does that. Like everyone, like sees a friend and is like, "Wow, look how uh, cool they are while doing things." Mutual admiration between friends is a very common emotion. Yeah. 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 Totally. Yeah. One hundred percent. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> what, are, uh, what are you? What are you working on? All right, so how's that calibration going along? You look around and realize that you haven't even touched the tools. Uh, making some great 
progress over here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we're about 25, what's belief one number? 25% uh, like uh, done uh, with uh -huh. the calibrate. Yeah. Just got to realign this um, gyro. I'm just waiting for the drill to power up. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, that. Did, yeah. Did, you, did you, did you, did you plug it in? Did I, did I plug in the drill? It, how's it going to power I, up? Um, it's, it It's battery powered. Uh huh. But you gotta charge the battery though. <laughs> I think Liana feels exactly the same way that you do, and you guys are like really, really well matched in terms of being amazing, badass people. And I'm proud to be mem crew members with both of y'all. So yeah, but like. What if, what if he's feeling more of like friendship than I'm feeling like? I don't think that's the case. You know how no, just, magnets we, kind of rotate and they keep the same distance no matter which way they're facing. That's that's y'all in a room. It's I, I it's mean, palpable. yeah, but you know, you know something my my brother used to teach me was that you got to do like these big grand gestures to kind of like know. It's something that actually be uh, uh, talked about before. It was like big grand gestures to really show that like you still care about somebody. And you know, I, I don't know. Like if I, if like, do we have big grand gestures between us? I really just don't. I like, think that kind of over overcoming the block you have between <laughs> the way you feel and the way you're able to show your feelings to people is a big gesture. Like you, you've been, you know. We've all been going through a lot, but like, you're not the kind of person who wears your heart on your sleeve unless your heart is to punch someone and then it's right there on the sleeve. Like we see it. True. <laughs> it's yeah, easier I, for you to show yeah, negative emotion than it is positive emotion. Am I right? Yeah. I want to get better at showing like positive emotions. In you're just very good at showing uh, Liana positive emotions. I'm just going to say that. I mean, he's very good at getting uh, positive emotions uh, out of, uh, um, yeah, he's real good at getting things out of you, huh? Okay, I, I, I let's um. As in, like drill. emotions, feelings. Yeah, yeah. I, like uh, uh, how how are your calibrations going? You know, you haven't really been mentioning <laughs> yours. So good. Um, I'm, I'm I've been running some remote pro program algorithms this whole time. They're going great. Thanks for asking. Yeah. Uh, hey, actually, let it. To, to, I got to, speaking of positive emotions. Yeah. Uh, I just want to say, I sorry for my previous outburst a, a while ago. I appreciate your apology. Thank you. Yeah, I got a, I got a lot to work through, and I don't think it was right that I took some of that out on you. But please understand that I'm still dealing with a lot. Of course. Both positive and negatively, and I'm trying to work through it in my own pace yeah but I, I appreciate you i appreciate you too and i think one thing i need to work on part of being an available sounding board for your friends and your family is giving them space to use the sounding board if they would like not shoving it in your face like hey tell me how you're feeling that's not that's not cool so i want to lay off on that and just be here if you need to talk yeah anything or anyone in particular, because <clears throat> the things <throat> you say to me, they stay with me. I'm not gonna be a run tell that. Or... Well, well, actually, has has Leon said anything about me to you? Like only in the sense that every fiber of their being is attuned to you and like clearly has a lot of compassion for you. Not in terms of words, but in terms of actions. <laughs> but is that like no. a friendship? Is that like is a, it, like a like a like a friendship like a, attunement or like? I, and I swear. Think... Someone no. could like bind their soul to you and be like, but did they do it as a friend? Yeah, but like, <laughs> is it like a, like a, like a homie love or like a, like a, or no, well, not a love, like not a love. I'm sorry. Why like, do that's you a need very a strong label? word. That's, that's a strong I, I am word. curious though. Like, why do you need a label? Does, what does it matter what your love is called as long as it's real and it's fulfilling and it's for the person who well, loves you? I mean, yeah, but I'm, I got a lot of absolutes in my life. Like I absolutely can't do this. I absolutely can't do that. I can't do this. Like I'd like, 
I think with everything that's going on in uh, like general, like a giant life or death mission, sometimes you need like a concrete, like, like stance like a concrete like just something you can go back to like hey everything else is ambiguous this is something that like i can like i know is true you know i do know and i think that we could definitely say that the love you guys have for each other is is true and it's real and it's as concrete as anything that you can go back to but it's up to you yeah. guys to define that together but, but like what no if, one's going to be able to tell you how Melinda, what if feels. it's a homie love and then, like, you guys want to make a home together? Kind of no, thing? no, no, not like a home ye love, like a ho- like, <laughs> like, just like two, like, like two, like, like two. What's that red flashing button? And I think it's like a comms, like, <laughs> oh my imagine. gosh, <laughs> saved by the emergency beacon. Yeah, just like, what's being, going being, on? Like, yeah, what's, uh, what's going on there? And like, presses it, and it's just like, like Leo screaming, just like, we're coming in. <laughs> oh my gosh, okay, battle stations, let's go. <laughs> Finish fixing that gun. We might need it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. I can do this in like two seconds. I can do this in two seconds. It's fine. Yeah. That's very wonderful. Um, uh, Anarch does try to sneak away without taking off his helmet. <laughs> uh, sorry. You said that it was um, helping you breathe. Air purifiers. Yeah. I think Mileto probably has something for that, actually. Hmm. Good. Well, then. Um, and Art still tries to slowly turn around. No, just come on. Just. <sighs> Don't make a big deal out of it. Um, out of and point. Anarch pulls the helmet off. Um, and there's a whole, like, there's like a, like on the back of his head on the side, um, it's, you, 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 some, when the helmet off, you smell burnt hair. Um, and <laughs> the, uh, his, like, uh, his, there's bits of his hair that's burned off and on the side of his face opposite to where Liana's scar is is a big red searing burn when did when did that happen to you something collapsed uh when i was grabbing the battery why why did you go into the building i thought you said we shouldn't do that because and Anarch looks straight at Liana. I was like, you needed this. Lopez needed it. And I'm the captain. Lopez and Mileta, you are in the room as this is happening. I, I like to imagine you running at that last moment and it was like, what the fuck happened? <sighs> uh, great news, actually. Um, and then anarchist anarchist is trying to weasel out of this and sort of gesture at Liana. Like, we got you a gift. Cap- a barbecued captain. We didn't ask for that. You said something fell on you. What fell on you? I thought the building had already mostly collapsed. <sighs> Liana. Leo finished her scan, and we found that there were still parts of the building that were standing up. So, I panicked, and I was like, I'll go get it. I pushed through the rubble, got the battery, and then support beam. Um, And there's a pause. And he looks down and away. Like, the support beam just suddenly gave away. And I think as you say that, the 
whole scene replays in Liana's head when they were in that state in their own sort of magic. And they remember, I think, I think you see flashes of different things, you know, flashes of Leo being held up, flashes of the burning building. And then I think they see a flash of a tentacle hitting a support beam and it falling. They don't see anything else, but they see that. A support beam? Yeah. And I think Liana just starts crying. They oh. put their head, I think, down on the table in front of them, like head in their hands, and they just start sobbing. And through the sobs, you can hear them trying to say, like, you hear like bits and pieces of words. You can't quite make out full sentences, but you hear something about my faults and I'm sorry. I I think Lopez has dropped everything and is immediately like run up to give you like a hug. And like pulled you like went up like there wasn't even like an ounce of hesitation of just like getting you in like a hug and not one that like pulls you in in case you don't want it it's just like one that immediately does that and then like kind of waits to see like where your response would be it just like just silently does that he falls into you i think kind of like crumples into your uh into your hug as if like two puzzle pieces kind of fitting together it like fits mm -hmm. perfectly Mm -hmm. And they keep sobbing, I think, and they keep repeating that phrase over and over and over again. It's like, it's like all of this stress and all of this anxiety that had been building up inside of them is finally kind of like come loose. Like you just pulled a plug on a drain and everything's just coming out. Yeah. I think Anarch sort of moves um, to sort of like be in front of the pair of you and drop down to like a crouch. And is sort of like looking and trying to catch Liana's gaze. It's like, hey, hey. Listen, if you want to feel like this is your fault, then I already forgive you. How I'm... can you do that when I've I've been so resentful to you for years? For what you did to me and what this easily do you want me to be mad longer or do you want me to hold on to it for 10 years I, I could i could try you're here my friend is here my friend is safe i'm here my face well I've been too proud of it. And I think Liana pulls away from Lopez and kind of like sinks down like out of the chair onto their knees in front of Anarch as well so that we're like eye to eye almost because you had been crouching. And they just kind of like look at this scar that has formed on Anarch's face. Like they're still crying. And they look at this scar, and they look back at Anarch. I'm sorry. For everything. For not just today, but... All of these years. All of the blame that I put on you for what happened to us. It wasn't just your fault. I forgive you. And I'm sorry too. For all of the bits of it that were. So. That's that. 
That's all we need to do. I want your focus now on the mission. All right. Nanak reaches out. Um, and if it's okay, like sort of tries to lean their foreheads together. Just like a very like soft moment. And he's like, all right. This really hurts though. This really fucking hurts though, buddy. And I'm going to go to the med station now. The, um, the minute you took off the helmet and the smell of burning flesh came in the room, Maletta ran to get the first aid kit and didn't want to interrupt you guys because clearly there's something going on. But like the second you go, it's really hurts. I'm like, please hold still. And I'm cupping your hand, the on the, your face with the, the unburned side of your face and <laughs> like just gently trying to apply burn cream to the rest. Yeah. And Anarch is not, Anarch is not like a hardcore type of dude. Like Anarch is whining the entire time. I'm like, ow. <laughs> <laughs> well you jammed a helmet on mm. over it oh gosh yeah leon will you cut my hair later <laughs> yeah yeah i can i i can do that all right cool. and uh don't worry i know some great meta gel that can help you out here perfect <laughs> yeah we're gonna need a lot of that oh gosh yeah but hey come on leona ow it's the gift oh um, right. Um, and Liana kind of like gets up off of the ground, walks over to this box, this bag, uh, that has whatever it is that we went here for. And oh, they power cells. Lopez doesn't know that yet. Um, oh, yeah, and, and that wasn't they, out loud. Uh, <laughs> that was mm. in your brain. Um, uh, and Liana kind of goes and like pushes it over, like across the table, closer to Lopez. Open it. Is this new gun batteries? And like opens it up, and it's just like, I what? And looks at both you and Anarch is like, and then uh, Leo, all three is like, what? What if? What is? What is That's this for? For you. I'm pretty sure that will fit inside of your power suit and help um, power it a little bit better. Longer term, more stable. I mean, you're always so worried about everything kind of stopping. I thought maybe, maybe it was a bad idea. I just thought it would no, be no, helpful. No, 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 and... no, 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 no. I, um... This is, this is grand. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, it's um. Th- uh, looks at Anarch and just says, "Uh, thank, thank you, Captain." It was and completely Leona's idea. Looks at. Liana and is just like I um um it, it I think at this moment understands that it's a lot of emotional like things are going on is just like I um lets the power cells drop and then gives you like this like tight hug and it's just like this hug that is like not just like friendship it's one of just like wow like this is just like tight big grabbies yeah <laughs> like even like a like a grab and like spin kind of of just like and just does that oh uh and I don't think Liana was expecting that. So they're just kind of like, and I think you like probably grab them around the arms so they can't reciprocate. Yeah. They're just like little dinosaur arms. Mm. Um, so they're just kind of like stuck here um, as you're like twirling them around. Um, and I think like they, they laugh a little bit at, at that. Like, I think more of like a, like a nervous surprise laughter because they weren't expecting this response and haven't seen Lopez emote like this since, mm. you know, since we got back. I mean, and like finally like puts you down and it's like I 
thank you. This is, um, uh, and then immediately like stiffens up and then like looks around the room and sees that everyone's watching. He's like, <clears throat> I, I gotta go. And then turns around and just like stomps over to the room. <laughs> and then, uh, Maletta on like your communicator, you get a bunch of text messages that are just like, or, uh, that are just like grand gesture, grand gesture. What the fuck do I do? Okay, it's not homie. It's not homie. It's not homie. <laughs> And I'm like, oh. you're already doing it, buddy. You're already doing it. I, did, I, did, I, did, did I do think I do you think they read too much into it? Do, do you think they, they caught on? Like, should I like should I say something? Should I what like I, uh... I think that they got what you were putting down, and they're going to keep getting what you're putting down if you keep putting it down. So keep getting it. <laughs> I feel I, like in this moment, yeah. Maletta maybe presses a little bit too hard on Anarch's face and is like, ah, pay attention, pay I'm attention, sorry. please. This is so cute. <laughs> Liana's just standing there confused, like, what? Why did they... <laughs> He's panicking. I don't understand. Runs uh, runs back. Uh, th- thank you. Uh, I, great. Um, uh, talk later. <laughs> Who are you talking to? You, you, you. Li- uh, Liana, you, you, you. <laughs> yeah, talk later. Talk later. Talk later. Dinner? Yeah, are you? We'll figure. We'll figure out food. I think because you're. Yeah, I I got like pouches. I could. Uh, I have pouches I can use. <laughs> but like, there's like, we could um get uh, dinner. Di- dinner. Yes. Yeah. Um. Yes. Talk later. Talk later. <laughs> One of these days, I want to set up a trip system just to get him each time he runs out. You hear a... Oh, sorry. Made it to another thing. <laughs> you gotta get some inertial dampeners in that helmet. That boy gonna knock out his little brain. And I think that's a good place to ask for all of our cards. We were all in this game, so I think everybody gets one. <laughs> Sounds good. Opus has just turned into how I interact with people that I'm like interested in. It's just like, yes, <laughs> life imitates <laughs> art imitates life imitates <laughs> anyway. You gotta get like a whole like airplane dragon a message. Yes, I'm into you. Let's do this Tuesday seven. Like, <laughs> if you was don't that for a... me? What if it wasn't for me? Exactly. What if, they what want if it wasn't? Me in a this is for you. Way. I look, oh cleric. God. All of my characters way of showing affection is gift giving. Is that a myth? Is that my way of showing affection? Who knows? You will never know. You'll never know. Uh. And all my characters are dense like, I don't know, like me, but I'm never dense. I don't know. Uh So cards. (laughs) Cards. Okay, so we're doing it for everybody, it sounds like. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, We'll go in mini game order, starting with Cleric. Sorry, Red. (laughs) <laughs> I'm so I wasn't even the main part of this game. Friends who roll <laughs> dice is a channel that we that I really do believe we're back behind. <laughs> You're back behind? Okay. Back behind uh, my back is behind friends who roll dice. So you know I'm leaving. Here at Friends Who Roll Dice, everything is behind the back of the bottom. There's there's a joke, there's a sex joke here somewhere. I just can't think of it. But it's, it's somewhere. Well, Katrina found it. Someone in the back of a bottom, maybe. <laughs> I, Katrina, stop calling me out like this. Uh huh. But <laughs> so, cleric, how does the enemy grow stronger? Uh, they know you got the power cells for uh, Lopez. They understand it, and now they know what exact power cells Lopez is going to be using. <laughs> No, Can't not have the best thing coming nice. the deficit. Can't have nothing nice. Nothing. <laughs> Katrina for Leo, also red. Oh man. Okay. Uh, the enemy grows stronger, and I don't know how evil I want to be this early in the game. Um. Let's just say that they now know exactly where Leo is, like, at all times. It's not just a, oh, they're in this system that's, they know exactly where Leo is. 
Hamna. Also red. Oh. I just want it to be gay. This is homophobic. You can also <laughs> be gay and, and make the enemy stronger. This is homophobic. Okay. This is um, reminding me of really of a Chili's guys, right now. Get in the comments. <laughs> get in the tip jar. $15. <laughs> I'm going to get a black I, card. I would. Okay. I. Mm, okay. How really did the chilly. enemy grow stronger as a result of that? Well, I guess if we're all making it so that our characters are the reasons why things are fucking bad. Um. They, 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 they noted. They noted that there's a way to make Liana lose control. Ooh. And maybe they noticed that, um, you know, if you if you manipulate Liana enough, emotionally speaking, you can get them to hurt their own team by accident. Huh? Would would, would be a shame if that happened, wouldn't it? Yeah. Why are there so many ways for us to die? Why are we playing a thousand and one ways to die by the enemy in this game? What is this? <laughs> we know. We know the end result. We know the end result. Okay, Jay, you also have oh, red. <laughs> Why? No. Homophobic. 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 I'm, telling you. I'm feeling oh, real chilly. I'm, it's feeling like a Chili's tonight, huh? Great. Okay, real so homophobic in these the, 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 the good news was that uh, Melita installed new firewalls because of those stupid bugs with the helmets. The bad news is that the enemy has figured out a back door into the firewalls that she doesn't know about. Great. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> and last but not least, Vic. Five for five, Red. Oh, Scrap right. the game. Scrap the game. Well, well time to hit the dusty Wait, trail. Is actually a way for us to win? Like, Scrap I feel like we've game. just secured I mean, our we death. Have, we have, like, I'm pretty sure the enemy, like, knows our bathroom schedules. At this point. <laughs> I mean, I mean, if they're low cards and we have high cards. But if they have all red cards, then what does it matter? I mean, technically, Mayor, where, where are we at now? 17 to 17 or something? I was about to count. I'll let you, I'll let you know in a second. Got you. Well, um, okay. Tell us so, another way we're going to die first, then we'll find out. Um, they are uh, the culmination of everything that you guys have said. Uh, they are sending um, they're sending uh, Annie to come and fight us. And Annie, um, I was like, they're sending Skywalker? What? <laughs> I am your uh, mother. But, well. um, but I think uh, because of the footage they got from Liana, I think they're going to try for uh, something that'll take out the captain, even if it doesn't take out the crew. Um, and you get like a you get like sort of a flash up of like um, this this the the uh, real anarch sort of um, head tilted to the side, wincing as they are putting a similar uh, new burn scar on their face. Dog. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I just counted it up and updated the overlay. We're at 18 black sep uh, between the crew and 20 red. Oh, no. And black was ahead at the beginning of the session. It yeah. was. I do recall. Oof. Wow. So uh, well, it's been vote nice in the comments. You. Yeah, vote in the comments. Who do you think is going to be the first one to perish in the, in the uh, last mission? My vote? Who Lopez. dies? Okay, well, you can't vote for yourself if you're just going to make yourself die. That's different. <laughs> I'm just thinking about that X-Men cover now where it's like, somebody dies! And it's like the whole crew, like, oh. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm darkest not... ending. The whole crew dies except for Leo. Leo has to, like, stay alive and remember everyone while trapped inside the enemy server, just having to be part of this terrible oh! program forever. Oh, thank oh, you. Thank okay, you, Jay. Mass Effect oh, ending. Okay. I remember that one. Wow. I remember that one. <laughs> Cool. The real L three ending there. But um, yeah, that was a rough, rough end of session. But you know what? Now there's more red cards out of the deck. We have a better chance of drawing black cards. Um, <laughs> let's say our goodbyes. So uh, that's not a real final. Let's say our goodbyes. <laughs> Next session. Right, why don't you start us off? Uh, sorry. I'm your local red card puller cleric here. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm honestly so stunned. The, the bottom was too stunned to speak. Um, 
the I fuck yeah. If you look at if you look for me, you could find me on TikTok and Twitter at cleric underscore thirty four. I make a lot of shit posts on there, comedy stuff. If you want to hear me talk more about TTRPGs or just in general, uh, I have a podcast called Monster Fuckers Anonymous, a show where we talk about monsters, talk about their lore, everything about them, and just rate them on a scale of one to ten to how much you should fuck those monsters. Some are good, some are bad, some are some are just okay, but all of them are sexy. We're in the middle of recording stuff. Uh, we're gonna we're getting it up, up blah, 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 blah. we're getting in the middle of recording so we get to get packed in our backlog uh a new episode should be dropping hopefully in october and uh there may be some guests that are on this pod on um, this stream that might be on that podcast you never know who could it be but yeah that's me <laughs> all right katrina <clears throat> Hi, my name's Katrina, and you can find me anywhere if you look for O Katrina on the internet. That's O H C A T R I N A. I also host a whole bunch of podcasts, um, but the ones that are super active right now are Pedro Pascal, the podcast where myself and Rachel Leachman go through the cinematography of Pedro Pascal, um, as well as What's Glove coming in September and a fight club far, far away where I dive into the greatest battles in Star Wars and pick them apart with some of my favorite people. Um, and yeah, just uh, look for me anywhere on the internet and you'll find all of those things. Hand it off to, uh, I don't know who's next. Um, Honda. Ha- what, who? <laughs> <laughs> it's me, <laughs> Mario. No. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Humna. I use any and all pronouns. We are all very professional over here, just so in case you were wondering. Uh, and I am a TTRPG performer. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at hshahid underscore, where I talk about all of the different projects that I'm a part of. I'm on a variety of different streams right now, so Twitter is the best place to know where I'll be at any point in time. But I do want to shout out one stream that's coming up on Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, uh, we will be live on Transplaner RPG. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Transplaner is an all transgender, POC led, DD 5e live stream set in a homebrew, non colonial, anti orientalist world. Uh, we are in Arc 6. We are in the second half of Arc 6 right now. Things are getting wild. I believe it's the Jukai group that are going to be live. So if you like time loops and breaking reality, that is what they're doing over there. So join us on Transplaner. And I will pass it over to Jay. Hey guys, I'm Jay Justice. You can find me at that Jay Justice on all the things. Look for some awesome cosplay on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and Tumblr occasionally. Uh, I also stream on Twitch. So come here for lots of comic book discussions, all the Marvel, DC, Dark Horse, Image, everything. Uh, we also do some cooking streams and I'll be on some more Friends Who Roll Dice uh, TTRPG soon. <laughs> all right, guys, that leaves me um it was very i was very happy being your captain today you can find me on twitter at philip Vicencio, uh where you can find news about all my projects and um got some new stuff in the works that i can't talk about yet but hey soon plans within plans <laughs> um and uh you can see me next tuesday on wonder home at, on ttrpg and then next wednesday here hello <laughs> and i can't wait to see y'all and i want to do another special thanks to mayor for being our producer and making sure that this all goes off without a hitch thank you so much and this this cast always makes me very very happy uh i was having a rough day today and then all you guys brought it back thank you guys so much and thank you all for watching all right. Thank you, everybody. That was a great session tonight. Um, just some miscellaneous uh, outro stuff from me, Mayor, the producer. Um, we have Monday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We have our flagship D&D 5e campaign, The Mind and the Martyr. And on tomorrow, tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we have the premiere of Camp Carnage, our Monster of the Week campaign. Um, on Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, we have our all POC Urban Shadows Western group, which is a riot. And uh, there is a game on next Thursday. It's not announced yet, but just keep an eye on our Twitter. It will be announced soon with a very stellar cast. So that's one a one shot. And then on the 27th at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time of Saturday is the premiere of Print Weaver Journey, which I will be running. <sighs> 
Anyway, thank you everyone so much for joining us tonight. We are going to go raid Stella Luna. Please go give some love in the chat and also some congratulations. They recently made partner on Twitch. Um, so we will see y'all next week for session four. Good night.